heard a pretty amazing promise come out of the mouth of Isaiah today, straight from the Lord. It was a message of peace, it was a message of hope, but as you heard those words, perhaps they sounded just a little unbelievable. Maybe a little too big to actually come to truth. Isaiah told us again in chapter 2, verse 4. He shall judge between the nations, and shall not decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So Isaiah pictures this time for us a perfect peace. Everything right, nobody fighting, not, not even nation against nation. Worldwide peace, kind of the, the dream of everyone, right? But if we think about reality, what's reality say to us? Conflict, right? Fighting, quarrels, problems between spouses, problems between family members, between friends, between people at school, between uh, people at work, all kinds of conflicts, right? Even sometimes conflict within the church. I heard a joke recently about a pastor and a worship leader who just could not see eye to eye. They were constantly going about back and forth with each other. And this began to actually spill out into the worship service. One Sunday, the, the pastor was preaching on how we should go and share the good news with other people. We should go out into the world and tell somebody. And the worship leader played immediately after the sermon the song, I shall not be moved. That was his response to the pastor. Pastor went on the next week, and he talked about the importance of giving toward those in need, giving toward the, the, the work of God in our world. And the song leader played right after that, Jesus paid it all. Following week, Pastor's getting kind of frustrated about this whole thing. He, he talks again about the, the importance of not gossiping with each other, of not you know, spreading bad words about each other. And the worship leader plays immediately after that, go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> Finally, the pastor had just had enough of this. Couldn't take it anymore, so he said, You know what? I think Jesus is leading me somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to resign. I'm going to take a call to a different church. And so immediately after this, the worship leader played, What a friend we have in Jesus. I'm so glad to finally be rid of that pastor. We know about fighting and conflict, don't we? Whether it's at home, the church, wherever it might be. God's word speaks of that fighting, not in such a uh, casual life. In fact, we maybe don't always realize this, we maybe don't always think about this, but God's word actually lists all this conflict and fighting that we tend to do amongst each other as sin. In fact, it even, it even puts it up there with some of the big sins that we all expect. Let's take into what Paul said to us in Romans this morning. Romans chapter 13, he said this, The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. So Paul lists all these sins here, and some of those you probably expect to see on there, right? We know God's Word tells us not to be sexually immoral, not to get caught up in drunkenness, that sort of stuff. But Paul lists in the midst of those sins... Quarreling and jealousy. And in the Greek, those words can basically mean kind of a, a bitter fighting with somebody else or a rivalry. Kind of like holding a grudge, we might think. Paul says, you know, those things are just as bad. They're just as sinful. They're just as wrong. And, you know, if you stop to think about life for a minute, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, isn't there? Because we've all been there, haven't we? Somebody said something that really hurt us. Or maybe we think about something we did. Maybe we have a little bit of guilt on our conscience because of something we did that hurt another person. God's Word tells us, still the same. Still that sin. Isaiah said those perfect words of peace today, but, but sometimes they can just seem so far away. They can almost seem unrealistic. And so I just begin to dig a little bit deeper. Isaiah presented those words to us today in the midst of terrible conflict. 
See, back there in the Old Testament, Israel was not this peace-loving place. Instead, in Isaiah's day, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were at civil war with each other. There had been a couple of assassinations during Isaiah's time. War was everywhere. Fighting was constant. Yet in the midst of that, Isaiah brings words from the Lord. And he gets really to the roots of that conflict. It's not just about you know, person against person. Really, that conflict, and the root of all conflict, is a problem with us and God. Isaiah said it this way in chapter 1, verse 2. Brings word from the Lord, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. That's really at the root of the problem, is rebellion against God in his perfect way. Rebellion against God and His grace and His love. And we look at God's Word, that's what you always see. Whenever there's a problem between humanity and God, it always spills out into our relationships with each other. Started all the way back in the beginning, back in Genesis, the creation. Man and woman fall into sin. And what do they immediately do? Start blaming each other, right? Start finding them. Look at Israel. What did they do? They rebelled against God's ways, and what did they do? They fought with them. And I imagine if we look deep into our lives, the same could be true there. The real problem lies here, this problem between us and God. So what's to be done? What's the answer to that? Well, Isaiah tells us today that, that we actually can't come up with that answer. You, you and I can't bring about the end of the conflict. Instead, Isaiah tells us that the Lord has to do something. God's got to break in and, and kind of break all the fighting up. It says this in Isaiah 2, verse, starting out in verse 2. So it comes to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it, and many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So Isaiah tells us that God himself is going to take the initiative. And he kind of, kind of words it in this interesting language here. He talks about the mountain of the Lord being lifted up and everybody flowing to it. Well, to understand what he means here, he's making a reference to Jerusalem. That was the place where the temple was. And in the Old Testament, that was where God dwelled with his people. So basically what Isaiah is telling to us today is that there was going to come a time when God would be so present with his people that his presence in this world would be so powerful that it would change everything. That it would bring peace between rebellious men and the Lord himself. Well, what's he getting at? Isaiah is talking about Christ. He's talking about Christ entering into this world and being that clear and perfect Light to bring about an end to the conflict between man and God. It talks about it here, it is the Lord's presence, because that's what we have in Christ. The presence of the Lord in our midst. And think about the context Isaiah is speaking this to. People filled with conflict, right? Thinking about God getting into the mix of our conflicts doesn't necessarily, you know, feel like a happy thought at first, does it? Because if you read through the Old Testament, you begin to think, well, maybe, you know, God came and was present in our world. You know, he brings judgment and wrath and, and punishment for the things that we do. But not so in Christ. Instead, Isaiah tells us that Jesus is going to come as the Prince of Peace. That he's going to put an end to the conflict. And again, he words it as this mountain being lifted up. So where do we find Christ? Presence on a mountain lifted up. That's the cross, right? That's the place where God brought about peace 
between sinful men and himself. There Jesus did what it took to make things right. He humbled himself. He took all of our sinfulness, all of our brokenness, all that fighting and quarreling. Jesus took that upon himself to clean up the mess, to put an end to the conflict, to get rid of our sin. So the other night, my wife and I got another lesson in parenting that you don't ever want to turn your eyes away from the two-year-old, not even just for a moment. We were enjoying, you know, some Thanksgiving leftovers, and we had a plate there on the edge of the table. It had, you know, some turkey and some stuffing and some sweet potatoes, orange in color on those. Our little guy turned our eyes for just a moment, put his hand on that plate, pulled it down on the carpet. And there was that food right there on the carpet. Nothing you could do about it at that point, right? You parents have probably been there before. You just have to clean it up. And see, that's the same thing our Lord has done for us. There's nothing you and I could have done about this mess. We just keep adding to it. And so the Lord had to come with himself. And he had to come and clean it up. That is what Christ did for you and me. And the reality that you and I get to rejoice in now is that we sit here today at peace with our Lord. That's what you and I have. Perfect peace with God. But Isaiah says it's going to go even further than that. He says that because of what Jesus has done for us, because of the power of his cross, because of the power of his resurrection, there will come a day when peace is everywhere. No conflict. No fighting. Not even between nations. And that sounds pretty unbelievable when you think about our world. But then he stopped to think about Jesus. And he stopped to think about his immense love for us. And he stopped to think about the fact that he is so powerful, he has risen from the dead. Then it all begins to make sense. In him is that peace. In him is that confidence. Now when the Bible makes promises to us, a lot of times theologians will sort of classify them as a promise that is for right now and also for not yet. And this promise is one of those kind of promises. It's not yet because Jesus hasn't returned yet. But it's also for right now. Because listen to what Isaiah says in verse 5. He says, O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Where are we walking right now? Just think about your life today. Where are you walking? In the light of Christ's peace? Or are you walking in what Paul described as the darkness, conflict, and fighting? Or like Isaiah said here, learning war. Getting ready to fight. See, God's Word tells us that, that this promise isn't something we just sort of tuck away for the future and forget about it. It's actually something we start living in right in this moment. Now, of course, you know, we're probably going to come up with excuses. Oh, that's too difficult. That's what we always say, you know, whenever God is trying to teach us to do something, right? It's too difficult, meaning I'm not going to do it. Or maybe you come along and you say, well, you know, Pastor, you don't know what it's like for me. And that's the truth. I don't. But the Lord knows. The Lord knows it all. Sees, hears, everything. And yet he still comes to us, despite that knowledge, still comes with that promise of peace. Still comes to us and says, you've got peace with me. Now it's time for that peace to bear fruit in your life. So how does that happen? Well, it only happens when we look to Christ. It only happens when we see what Jesus has done for us and begin to extend that to other people. So that means sometimes we're going to have to humble ourselves. As hard as that can be. Sometimes when you make a mistake, you do something wrong, you're going to have to say, I'm sorry to that person you wronged." Sometimes it means that you're going to also have to say, I forgive you to someone that's wrong. As hard and difficult as that might be. 
Maybe some of you remember growing up and maybe your parents, grandparents said to you, at times, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, right? Maybe we have to humble ourselves at times and do that. Maybe sometimes when you're online and somebody gets you all worked up over something they said, maybe the best thing isn't to tie back at them as fast as you can. Maybe the best thing to do isn't to have the last word. God instead is calling us to something different. He's calling us to live in His peace. And as difficult as that is, imagine how different that might make our lives. Imagine if instead of striving for the final word or that last little dig that we can get in on someone, imagine if we just took a step back, thought about that peace we have with Christ. Could that make things a little bit different? Could it perhaps begin to change just even a few things in our relationships with each other? That's the challenge God puts forth to us today. He challenges us to rejoice in the fact that we have peace with Him. And to love that. And, and to be happy about that. But He also invites us to begin to practice that peace amongst ourselves with each other. Let's go to Him now. Heavenly Father, you have seen the conflicts that go on in our world and in our lives. And yet you come to us with this promise that with you we have peace, we have forgiveness, we have your son. Lord, as we go out and we live our lives and, and face so many difficult things that only you yourself know about, Lord, we pray that you would help us to find peace in you and to find peace with each other. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.